I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset. It is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint. From the standpoint of the spirit, eternity, and destiny, in fact, your only real assets, the only real assets you have, I repeat, are number one, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Make reference to my teaching, What Seekest Thou? I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is God's idea of fulfillment. The only real assets that you have are your relationship with God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Welcome to Start Now Channel. We are glad you tuned in today to experience another life-changing encounter in God's presence. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verses 130, The entrance of thy word giveth life. As you listen and watch, may you experience the transformative power of God's life. The only real assets you have are God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Please write. The only real assets that you have in this life are God, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, respectfully speaking, with respect to destiny and an eternal perspective, your account is not an asset. The land you have is not an asset. It is only an asset when it is looked at from an economic standpoint. From the standpoint of the spirit, eternity, and destiny, in fact. Your only real assets, the only real assets you have, I repeat, are number one, your relationship with God. Number two, your peace. Number three, your fulfillment. What is fulfillment? Make reference to my teaching, What Seekest Thou? I define fulfillment as the satisfaction that is derived from knowing that you have lived your life effectively, serving the purposes of God and being a blessing to humanity. That is God's idea of fulfillment. The only real assets that you have are your relationship with God, your peace, and your fulfillment. Jeremiah chapter 9 from 23 and 24. Let's find something somewhere to pray now. Thus said the Lord, let not the wise man, Koinonia, please listen. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Neither let the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. 24. But let him that glory, glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. The real asset of the believer is the wealth of your knowing God. John 17 and verse 3. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Your real asset is your relationship with Jesus. John 14, 27. John 14, 27. Peace, shalom. I live with you my peace give I unto you not as the world giveth give I to you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid please look at me no matter what you have in this life and no matter your level of achievement and accomplishment ask anybody who has lived long enough upon this earth does not matter what field and frankly speaking does not even matter whether he's a christian or not you just meet someone who has experienced the blessing of longevity and ask them what things from your experience among the many things you feel are really valuable they will tell you peace the highest definition of success for me is peace beyond progress peace when people die you never say rest in progress you never say rest in investments 
you never say rest on top of your assets you say rest in peace so peace is a gift that even a dying man can go with nobody can carry his land out of the earth nobody can carry his certificate out of the earth nobody can carry you cannot carry your office out of the earth no matter how beautiful how handsome a few hours after death and the person is deshaped in a way beyond recognition days after decay sets in and that's the end of it all that is left after a long time is the skeletal frame of that person all the beauty and all the glamour fades literally from dust thou art and to dust thou shalt return but let me tell you three things that you can take out of this life you cannot take land therefore don't let land replace your relationship with god don't let land re replace your peace and your fulfillment all these three things i am mentioning you can take them out of this earth number one your relationship with jesus can be transported beyond this realm that will be the basis of your being with him when all is said and done number two is your peace can i tell you if you even live without peace it already suggests to you where you are going to am i right on that yes sir because jesus is called the prince of peace there are people who do not care whether they have peace listen i say this as i wrap up and i say this with every sense of humility and responsibility i have met very wealthy people who have lost peace for money they traded peace for money medical doctors here will tell you there are people who have a lot of money estates I'm, and i'm not against prosperity but they cannot find peace there are men of god respectfully speaking they are so obsessed about advancement in ministry that they lose their peace there are many who are so obsessed about their reputation they would rather their peace go away and preserve their reputation no in order of priority the greatest assets you will truly have in your life this is the mentality of the victor your relationship with jesus your peace and your fulfillment i have had the honor of praying for people some of them minutes before their transition and i have seen people laugh as they leave you know how people will say ah i'm going mm -mm. they were not even desirous of prayer because all has been put in place they put everything in place their will they live useful lives some of them have had the honor of having their children around them one of my dear pastor friends in Kenya I think one time when his father was about transiting in glory I had the honor of seeing the father lovely family that man even in his old age and in his health state he still went to church and when it was his final moments the family members gathered around him like this what a beautiful way to transit gathered they sang hymns they sang songs they did everything and then the wife went into the kitchen their mother and when she came out he smiled at her one last time and transited to heaven versus hold on let me paint another picture versus the person who sits down you've cheated people you've lived a wicked life you refuse to receive jesus as your lord and savior downplayed everything spirituality spent your life looking for money spent your life making ends meet and finally you are told you are about to go i present to you two people two people at the end of their lives there are people today there are all kinds of arguments about their properties arguments about their estates they've gone they've long gone long gone long gone if Jesus comes and meets us while working then hallelujah to him we transit in glory and grace but if he stays long enough for us to finish our assignment and we enjoy length of days because I hope you know the purpose of long life is not fear of death hey look at me I hope you know that the purpose of long life is not fear of death I hope you are not offended the purpose of long life is not fear of death if you are afraid of death what you need is Jesus not long life you will not die don't worry am I not the one who speaks over you you will not die but the purpose of long life hear me the purpose of long life is not to manage the fear of death that's not a wise way to live it's not a victorious way to live did the Bible not say for for me to live is Christ and he calls death gain 
is it not profit that made you go for business <laughs> and now he says there is another kind of profit when you transit are we together most people cannot talk about death as I'm saying like this. Oh, oh Apostle, you are talking like this. Are you, I'm not going anywhere. Look, you don't know, you don't know my agreement with God. You don't, don't, listen. Me and God, we are not stupid people. I'm not serving God for nothing. So when I talk like this, it is my priestly duty to you. Don't think these are some finals. You will see me next week, next year. I'm, I'm here. I'm, listen, I'm only teaching you the mentality of the victor. Are we together? If you cannot talk like this, when I make the altar call, come and stand here. Because that, listen, listen, it's a very, if you do not have the confidence, if you fear death so much, it's because you do not know Jesus. To be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Not to be on a journey going, to be present with him. What then is the excellency of saying it is finished? That way you can, you can smile at life. Listen, for all those who are elderly here and are listening, the truth is if Christ tarries all of us, that queue, we're going to join it and transit. So let me advise every person here. I hate to be, I'm not bringing bad news. But let me advise every elderly person. Elderly here means what, what age do we put elderly? Let's say from 60 and above sincerely do not fear death take the time you have to prepare your life with honor that if christ tarries you can transit with joy that i have raised children that love the lord i have spent my life serving the purposes of god and even if it is one year left do it with honor let the nobility of that one year swallow up the remaining years of wastage if you cannot pray you can give if you cannot give you can send men there are people as they die they remember the buses they provided for people to come to church they remembered televisions that they set up for people to hear the gospel it is the reason why many of us are rejoicing while we are serving god because if i die today you've heard me say it is only that i did not finish my assignment on, uh, but th that is i'm just giving you an, an a reason saying if i die today that may be my only challenge but I'm still alive through the teachings that go spread across lives. Look at men like Reinhard Bonke. I was listening to one of his teachings a few days ago. And I said, my God, men who, though they are dead, they are still alive. My, my eternal mentor, Dr. Miles Munro, long dead, but he's still alive. Today we have become extensions of his legacy. When God raised him, he saw us in him. Quit that life of fear and that makes you live a mediocre life. Spend your life doing the things that matter to be victorious for the kingdom. We believe you were blessed by the message you just watched. Let us know what stood out to you in the comment section. You can also support our channel by liking and sharing our videos. So more people like you will be able to watch these powerful messages. We celebrate you and see you in our next video. Thank you.